Hey, welcome to 40 Days of Holiness. Grab your workbook. You know what to do, right? We're going to take notes. We're going to work through all this. Today's theme, uh, let's see, we are on, oh goodness, day 10 today. Uh, holiness means purity from corruption. You ever seen the yin-yang symbol, right? It's like this universal symbol in Eastern religions. The basic idea is that there's dark and light balance in the universe and that in all light there is some dark, in all dark there is some light. Um, it's kind of, you know, Eastern uh, thinkers basically came to this conclusion studying the universe and that it's kind of a, a natural, honestly, natural conclusion to come to, right? There's some good and all bad, there's some bad and all good. Everything in the universe has its yin and its yang, some good, some bad, some corruption, but in the corruption there's some purity and then the strength there's some weakness and some dark and some light. Everything's mixed and the two are entangled. And that mixture includes moral corruption. So this can be in our actions like stealing, lying, and murder, and sometimes that's in the life of a relatively good person in other areas. Here's the thing. Yin and yang does not adequately explain the universe. It doesn't. Here's why. Because God's not mixed. He is utterly, unimaginably pure, completely incorruptible. So when God calls us to be holy like He is holy, He's requiring us to be untouched by that which br brings corruption. So God has this, talks about this kind of holiness in Leviticus, and he makes it a violation of his holiness to be touched by a dead body or have an infection or touched by an unclean animal. And if we want to know God, we have to be free from evil actions, free from the guilt of sin. So Isaiah 59.2 says, But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not here. But the corruption of sin goes deeper than just the actions that verse is talking about. It goes down into motivations too. So this is why Jesus' teachings were so revolutionary. He taught in such a way that he exposed the heart of people. When he taught, he showed it was possible to do even right things from wrong motives. There's lie mixed with honesty or ambition, which is good, right? Mixed with greed. There is selflessness, but it's mixed with a selfish motive. Jesus even taught that there could be giving mixed with pride or arrogance mixed with prayer. In other words, even good actions can be mixed with morally corrupting motivations and influence. Now, the New Testament has many pictures of this, like Ezekiel 14.4 says this, Therefore, speak to them and tell them this is what the Sovereign Lord says. When any of the Israelites set up idols in their hearts, the Lord will answer them in keeping with their great idolatry. In other words, he's saying it's not just an idol in the corner of your house. The problem is that the idol got out of the corner of your house and got into your heart. Isaiah 6 talks about it as an issue of lips. Isaiah says, I'm a man of unclean lips. And this becomes really important when you remember that in the New Testament, Jesus talks about it as the heart and the mouth together. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So Isaiah's problem showed up in his mouth, but it came from his heart. Even though he was right with God, it was literally God's prophet. And David talks about it this way in Psalm 51.5. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. And then he goes on to ask God to cleanse him with hyssop. Now, in Leviticus, in the Old Testament, hyssop was used in the purification ceremony for when you had come into contact with a dead body or leprosy, something that defiled you. So before you could come back into the holy place, into the presence of God, the temple or tabernacle, you had to be sprinkled with hyssop, symbolically cleansing you from the potential corruption of being unclean. So put this together. David's saying this corruption that's inside is, is like being for present from the time I was born and before is like being continually in contact with a dead body. I need to be sprinkled so I can come back into the presence of God. It keeps me continually stuck in the outer levels of holiness. I can't come to the middle, to the center where God is. David's like, this internal corruption is keeping me from journeying deep into God's essential nature. It keeps me from really getting into Him and knowing Him. It's the same for me and you. 
Now, tomorrow we're going to look more at this nature of what it's like. I, I will give you a brief word of warning here. We're going into a few hard days, okay? Buckle up. We're going to look in the mirror. We're going to talk about some uncomfortable realities. We're going to clean out the wound so it can heal. All right, you know you got to do that, right? Sometimes you got to clean out the wound before it can heal. But listen, God can heal the wound of the heart. Don't get discouraged by the clean-out process. Don't get discouraged by the fact that we got to dive in deep and figure out what the problem is all the way down to the core. It's not enough to just play around the edges and say, I'm going to clean up some of these public things in my life and do holier stuff. God says, I want to dive down deep and transform not just the actions on the outside, but the motivations of the heart. So let's do that, all right? Let's go deep with the Lord and uh, be, be willing to stick with me for the next few days. I promise it's going to get more encouraging. The next few days are going to look inside and say, I see what's here, and I see where there's corruption. I see where there's negative things, and I want God to clean it out. All right? So stick with me. Do the workbook. Let's stay with it for the next few days. And uh, God's going to heal some things, some really deep stuff in your heart and in our hearts. All right? God bless you. See you tomorrow. Thank you.